Well, I know it is a little bit late for a holiday video, uh, but today we're going to be talking about the holidays. For as long as I can remember, the holidays have always been one of my favorite times of the year. The reasons have changed over the years, though. Uh, when I was a kid, I obviously loved the gifts and the excitement of getting to go somewhere new. But now that I'm older, it's more about getting to see and spend time with the people that I don't get to see as often throughout the rest of the year. Especially since I've been living away from home for the last few years, that part is really special to me now. Part of the reason I got into photography in the first place was to document the parts of my life that were exciting or important to me that I wanted to be able to look back on and remember, and the holidays always fallen into that category for me. Before we jump into talking about the holidays though, I have a couple like disclaimers and a quick plug for the social media. Sorry, Instagram hasn't added support for that with Siri. Before we jump into talking about the holidays, I just got a couple quick notes to go over. So the first is if you would like to support me on this channel, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter, X, whatever, uh, from the link down in the description. They're both just write film, but you can find them down there if you want to. And you can also check out my print shop that is linked in the description as well. If you would like to support me in that way, I'm going to have some new photos from uh, this video up in the shop, as well as some older photos that I've had up in there for a while. So if you're interested in any of that, the links are down in the description. I also want to give the quick disclaimer that this is the first video I've shot with this new camera that I've gotten. And I shot all of the B-roll footage for this. I don't want to say before I knew what I was doing with this camera, but I picked a quick setting and then stuck with it so that I wouldn't have inconsistent looking footage, but I don't really like how all of it came out necessarily. So it may look a little bit odd, but I've kind of figured out some better camera settings now for the main footage. But I just want to let you know the B-roll footage is not as good as I would hope for it to be. We're learning, we're figuring it out. That's all for that. Let's jump into talking about the holidays. Can't do the flannel. Oh, Honestly, one of my favorite parts about any trip now that I'm a film photographer is picking out the cameras and the film that I'm going to bring with me. For the holidays of 2020, which is the first holiday season that I was shooting film, I just bought the single camera that I had with me and I didn't even finish the one roll of HP5 that I had loaded in it. The holidays of 2021, I brought two cameras and that was where my terrible slide film from the intro to film photography video came in. It was expired and I had no idea that it was as expired as it was. So I brought that along with some little point shoots and I did end up finishing most of that film. Last holiday season it was a little bit chaotic and I didn't end up really taking that many photos at all. And I think they were pretty much all on my point and shoot. I didn't finish any of the film that I loaded into any of my SLRs. So for the holidays of 2023, I wanted to switch it up and do something I hadn't tried at all before. So I decided to shoot entirely expired film. The choice to shoot expired film was partly one of interest, but also one of pragmatism. This past year, I accumulated a good amount of expired film. Some of it was a gift from my father-in-law last Christmas. Thank you, Dave. And some of it I bought super cheap from thrift stores or online bulk sales. Basically, I just have a lot of expired film and I want to get rid of it. But I did also think this would be not only a fun creative limitation, but also a good way to get rid of a lot of the film, since I do tend to go out and shoot a decent amount out anytime I travel. Now that I'd nailed the film part of the trip down, it was time to narrow down the cameras that I was going to bring. Usually when I'm packing for trips, I choose my cameras first and then my films, so making the choice early to commit to only expired film was kind of an interesting wrench to throw in my planning process. For those who don't know, let me give you a brief introduction to expired film.
Think of the expiration date on film as kind of a shelf stable date. If you shoot film before its expiration date, you'll get consistent results that should look pretty close to what the manufacturer intends for that film stock. After the expiration date, the chemical emulsion of the film will start to become unstable, which means the results will get less and less predictable. This could be anything from color shifts to more grain to color bleed, almost anything really. The biggest hurdle with expired film though is usually the loss of light sensitivity. To counteract this, the rule for shooting expired film is generally to rate the expired film one stop lower for every decade that it was expired. So if you have some expired Kodak Gold 200 from 2013, then you would rate it at ISO 100 instead. This is just to give the film a little bit more light and try and overcome any light sensitivity that was lost from the decade since the film has expired. Knowing that most of the film that I had expired in the 2007 to 2009 range, almost two decades ago, I knew I'd be needing to shoot it at a much lower ISO than its box speed, so that eliminates any camera that automatically sets the ISO for me. Thinking about the potential for shooting in more limited lighting as well, that made me lean a little bit more towards cameras that I have faster lenses for, something with a maximum aperture of something like f2.8 or faster. The last choice I made was that I wanted to bring a maximum of two cameras with me on this trip. In previous years, I've brought like a handful of cameras, and it's led me to not finishing most of the film that I've loaded in any of them. With all these factors in mind, I ended up choosing the Minolta X370 and my Fed 5B. The Fed 5B is a quirky little camera, but it's one of my favorite cameras to shoot with, and it constantly produces some of my favorite images. The only lens I have for it is this Indestar 50 2.8 lens that came on it, which isn't the fastest lens, but it's enough light for most situations. This camera is also thin, light, and quiet, which can make it really discreet to use like indoors or when I'm out walking around the city. The biggest negative to this camera is that it doesn't have a built-in light meter, so I basically have to keep this Kex OM2 light meter attached to the shoe mount at all times. And remember to charge it, because it has a battery and has to be charged. My Minolta X370 is one of the newer cameras that I have, but it's quickly become one of my favorites. It's mostly manual, but it does have a built-in light meter and an automated aperture priority mode you can use, which makes it faster to use than the Fed or any other full manual option that I have. I also own both a 58 millimeter F1.8 and a 50 millimeter F1.7 for it, which are both great for darker situations, like just lounging around the house. Ultimately, I did decide to stick with my less is more approach and only bring one lens for each camera. For the Fed, this was easy because I only own the one lens that I mentioned earlier for it, but for the Minolta, this was a little bit more of a tricky decision to make. I have three lenses for the Minolta MC slash MD mounts, the Rocker 50mm f1.7, the Rocker PF 58 f1.4, and the Albinar 80mm to 200mm f3.9. It was a close decision between the 50 and the 58, but I ultimately decided to take the 50mm f1.7 because I haven't really shot as much of that, and I figured this was a good time as any to get some more shots in with it, and I was hoping that sticking to one focal length would help me like get in the zone quicker and I would throw myself off less changing fields of view between two different focal lengths. With the gear decisions made, it was time to pack up and hit the road for Thanksgiving. For this trip, we would be heading to see my wife's family in Springfield. There's one in every state, so I'll just let you guess which one. I went ahead and loaded both of my cameras to avoid having to do that in the car. In the Fed, I already knew I wanted to shoot at least one roll of the expired Kodak T-Max that I have left because I'd shot some in this camera before and I really loved the results that I got from it. Last time I shot it, I rated it at ISO 50, so I did that again to hopefully get some results that were pretty close to the ones I got last time. This time I would be using a recently acquired Canon Y3 yellow filter to hopefully bring a little bit more contrast out of this like 15 year old expired film. For the Minolta, I was a little bit more torn on what film to load into it first, but I ultimately decided on some Kodak Max 800. Knowing that this film expired somewhere between 07 and 09, I went back and forth on what exactly to rate this film at, but I settled eventually on ISO 200. Thinking about the potential of having to shoot in dimmer or like indoor lighting, I knew that I might need every little bit of light that I could get. Cameras and Subarus loaded, we hit the road for Thanksgiving. Well, not quite. I still had to work the day before Thanksgiving, but, 
after my Uber picked me up in a car that looks strangely like Rachel's Subaru, we were officially on the road for the holidays. Usually I am actually a bit of a car window photographer, but this drive was actually mostly in the dark. So the one photo I tried to take did not come out. Disappointing photo aside, we did arrive safely to our family and we hit the hay shortly after arriving. The next day was Thanksgiving and I didn't really plan on taking any photos that day. Obviously I still brought a camera because I'm a photographer, but I did get to end up playing sports photographer to the family flag football game that day. And I did actually end up shooting the whole roll of black and white film that I had loaded in the Fed. Most of the shots just came out okay, but I was only using a 50 millimeter, so my options for shots without getting directly involved in the game were a little bit limited. We spent the evening after this as a family with some calm, relaxing Mario Party. I can assure you we were all very grateful for each other in that moment. We woke the next morning fueled by Thanksgiving leftovers and the rage from last night's Mario party, ready to do some Black Friday shopping. But first, we would be meeting our pal Liss downtown for some breakfast and coffee. While we were waiting for our table to be ready, I walked around a little bit with my camera, as I do, and I actually found this really cool mural and decided to try and capture it. I don't think this shot is necessarily bad per se. I just didn't know exactly how to frame it and I don't think that this photo is as good as it could be. After breakfast, we walked down the street to a little coffee shop where I encountered another wild film photographer rocking a Leica M6. While we were waiting on our drinks, I took this photo of Rachel and I actually really like it. My Minolta did decide it really wanted to save the highlights from the window behind her instead of actually properly exposing her face, but it's still a really cozy shot and I actually enjoy it a lot. After we realized that there were two film photographers under the same roof, we knew we had to get out of there as soon as possible or we risk tearing a hole in the fabric of reality. So, coffee in hand, we set out on a little walk downtown. Our first stop was a local bookstore named Bookmarks. Me and Liss are really big readers, so we could have spent all day there, especially because they have two store cats named Googie and Squash. For those who are curious, I picked up a copy of Pierce Brown's Red Rising. I've been on a really big fantasy kick lately, and I've heard a lot of really good things about that book, so I'm really intrigued to read it, hopefully sometime soon. After that, we just kind of wandered around downtown for a little bit. It looks like they had literally just begun decorating for Christmas, so it was beginning to feel quite festive down there. We didn't walk very far and we weren't out for very long, so I totally forgot to take any B-roll footage, but here are some of the photos I took. Apparently this last photo of this building is a very common generic Springfield photo from this angle, but I did take it from a different vantage point later that I think is a bit more interesting. After walking around for a little bit, I was lured back to the car with promises of rooftop cityscape views and some Black Friday shopping. The rooftop view was just a parking garage, but the views did not disappoint. Side note, that little flopping sound that you're hearing in some of these videos is Rachel's shoe that apparently started to come apart at some point during our adding, and despite an attempted quick fix with tape, was still flapping with every step. It was pretty gloomy and overcast, but I still really like how these photos came out. The flatter lighting complemented the expired film well, since my camera could actually get a good, even exposure for the whole scene. And here's that same building from earlier from this rooftop vantage point. 
On the walk back to the car, I found this little cubby that caught my eye. I know it's probably just like the smoke break spot for this little restaurant, but I thought it was kind of an interesting view, so I stopped to grab a shot of it real quick. I also saw this little empty building while we were crossing the street and I stopped in the middle of crossing the road to grab a shot of it. It didn't quite come out how I was hoping it would. I don't think I really stopped to change my exposure settings so I definitely think it's a little bit underexposed and the composition just isn't quite it. I'll definitely be back to try and retake this photo at another time because I think there's some potential here for a really cool shot. After our walk around downtown, it was time for the main event. Black Friday. We got in the car, blasted some 1975, and headed to hunt for some deals. I'm hyping this up like we went somewhere cool and we're like fist fighting people for deals, but we just went to vintage stock. Obviously it was an absolute madhouse on Black Friday, so we didn't stay for that long. After fist fighting some people over Animal Crossing cards and a new copy of Kingdom Hearts 3, we were all a little bit hungry and decided to take a drive over to Sonic for some snacks and bevies. This is basically the last outing that we made for the day since we were leaving straight from here to go to a family dinner for the evening. That night, I did finally reload the Fed. I originally intended to throw some expired Fuji C200 that I have in there, but the place that I got these from hand rolled them and they're only like 20 exposure short rolls. And since they didn't really cut like a tail into the lead, my Fed just like straight up rejected them. And so did my Minolta later on in the trip when I tried to load it in that too. So instead, I loaded up a roll of Kodak Max 400 and decided to shoot it at ISO 50 as well since that gave pretty good results from the expired T-Max that I have from this batch. For our last full day in Springfield, we mostly just wanted to chill out. We took a slow morning at home and then headed out for an afternoon trip. Our first stop was at Bedford Camera and Video. I wanted to get a bigger memory card for this video camera that I just got and I was hoping to get a roll of higher speed black and white film for some shows that some of my friends would be playing between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Luckily I went two for two this time and I ended up getting a roll of Ilford Delta 3200 and a 64 gigabyte SD card for this camera. Our next stop was lunch with our friend Liss and then a afternoon of some chill reading time at their apartment downtown. Throughout their afternoon of reading though I ended up snagging some really cozy photos that I really enjoy. A couple of them were just some kind of like still life photos capturing the cozy vibe of the apartment, but I did also make it my personal mission to capture a photo of Liz's cat named Gigi, who is very elusive and very choosy with how close he will let you get. And after sitting in the middle of the floor with my camera for a while, I got one. And I did also take one of my best pal Sunday. We spent quite a while over there and I did actually end up finishing the last few shots of this roll that was in my Minolta. And it turns out this is actually my 100th roll of film completed, which feels crazy to think about. But anyways, the holidays. After reloading the Minolta, I only took one photo while we were still over there, but I captured some kind of absolute magic in this one. We were about to leave and I looked up and saw the sunset that was happening and I immediately grabbed my camera and took this photo. Rachel talks all the time about Midwest sunsets and I had yet to see one on any of my trips in Springfield that really caught me as anything crazy, but this one really convinced me. On our way back home, we grabbed some Chinese food and while I wouldn't normally include any kind of like B-roll or photos from like stopping to get dinner, I did risk the low light handshake to take this photo and I'm really glad that I did. I was very surprised this one came out and obviously the shadows are very dark and have almost no detail, but you can just make out Rachel standing at the counter and grabbing our food. And I actually really like how this photo came out. We spent this last evening eating crab rangoons and playing board games, and it was a really nice way to cap off the first leg of this little trip with the family. But with that, the first leg of our holiday travels came to an end. Now we're into the weird three week period between Thanksgiving and Christmas where it feels like nothing matters in regular life. As good a time as any to make adjustments on gear. Honestly, so far I was having a really good time with the expired film experiment. 
The creative limitations of only shooting at ISO 50 to 200 was a challenge, but it made me really pay attention to my lighting changes and actually stop and think about what camera that I was going to bring out whenever I would go shoot. The only problem I was really running into is that I just kind of forgot that I brought a flash with me and I wasn't using it at all. It wouldn't really change any of the shots that I took on this past Thanksgiving trip, but I knew that going into Christmas, I wanted to use it more because I knew it'd be indoors a lot more and it would actually make a big difference to the shots that I could take in that environment. I also made a deliberate note to remember to bring my tripod this time because I forgot it on the Thanksgiving trip and I was hoping that I would have a chance to go out and use it for this Christmas trip. It is at this point in the video where we have a brief intermission from the holidays proper and I will talk about a couple of other quick things that I did between the traveling so if you just want to get back to the holidays feel free to skip ahead to the timestamp that's on screen now. The Monday after we got back from Thanksgiving some good friends of mine in their band Rosary were playing a show so I decided to swing by with my camera and take some photos. You might be saying to yourself hmm that sounds like it would suck to shoot on expired film and you're absolutely correct so I shot it on Ilford Delta 3200 and a camera with autofocus. I didn't want to bring my new video camera into a metal pit, so I didn't take any B-roll of this, but I'll include some social media videos that I saw from the show and my best photos. I was supposed to be going to another friend's show this week to finish off the role of Delta 3200, but they ended up playing before I even got off work for the evening, so I was left with about half a roll of high-speed black and white film to finish off at some point. Luckily, I knew my good buddy Spoon's birthday was coming up this week, and I knew we'd be going to a local pin bar ball to celebrate. Unluckily, I still didn't finish off the roll of 3200. The bar we ended up going to is a new bar in town called Flipside, located in Midtown Memphis. It's a fairly new bar, and I haven't been since they opened, but I was really looking forward to checking out this place. It was way bigger than I thought it would be on the inside from just looking at the building and the posts that I've seen online, and the interior design overall was really cool. We ended up hanging out for a few hours, playing both pinball and pool on and off throughout the evening. I'm bad at both of these, but I had a lot of fun learning how to play pinball, so that's all that really matters. My like, like, wow. Like, subjectively, it felt louder than standing in the lobby at the high tone when the bands were playing in the detective room. Like, absurdly loud. Crazy high decibels of just 80s air metal and whatever kind of rocket pop hits from that era. Insanely loud. Like, even wearing my loops in-ear filters all the way cranked, I still felt very overstimulated most of the time so that combined with like actually wanting to enjoy the time I was spending there with Spoon and learning how to play pinball I just didn't take that many pictures while we were there it was also not very packed so I felt like internally like everyone was staring at me anytime I took out a camera they probably weren't but like there wasn't that many people in there and it felt really weird to take a camera out in the middle of it so I just didn't take that many pictures disclaimers aside I did take one absolute banger shot while we were in there, and it is this photo. Even with the one really good shot and the one or two other shots that I took that didn't come out, still was nowhere close to finishing this roll of film. I did consider bringing this camera along with me to the holidays to finish off the rest of this roll at Christmas, but I wanted to stick to the expired film challenge, so I ended up leaving this camera behind. I'm going to include a bonus section after the rest of the footage from the holidays where I actually finish up this roll though, so if you would like to check out the timestamp right here, you can watch that. Consider it the post credit scene of my Marvel Cinematic Universe. The holidays really snuck up on us this year, so our day to finally leave for Christmas felt like it came out of the blue. On top of this, I was also finishing up the massive, super long intro to film video that I posted, so that definitely added to the packing and travel stress of getting ready for Christmas as well. As a quick aside, thank you for the very warm reception and kind words on that video. That video has been months in the making. I think I started it in July. So it means a lot to get it finally out there and to get such a positive reception for it. So again, thank you. The actual packing and preparation for the Christmas travels were pretty straightforward since I'd already made the gear choices ahead of time. It was just a matter of putting them all back in my bag and charging up a few things like my light meter and my camera. I did also remember to trick my ADHD brain and put my tripod near the rest of my gear so I would actually remember to bring it this time. And unlike Thanksgiving, I actually took the day that we were traveling off so we could just get up 
pack the car and leave. For Christmas this year, we were actually going to be seeing both sides of our family, so we were seeing Rachel's family in Springfield again, and seeing my family in Clarksville. Our travel day out to Springfield was actually pretty uneventful this year. No negative temperatures or blizzards like last year. I did actually take one really cool shot out of the car this time as the sun was beginning to set. Once we did arrive, we spent the evening chilling and catching up and bonding over some relaxing Mario Party once again. We are big Mario Party fans in this household. The next day, we enjoyed a nice, slow morning at home. This is our first real, like, exhale from the hustle and bustle of getting ready for the holidays and working full-time, in my case, and finishing a semester of grad school, in Rachel's case. So we were really just soaking in the slow holiday vibes. Around lunchtime, we decided to go meet up with our pal Liss, who you may remember from the previous Thanksgiving part of the video. For this outing, I decided to bring the Fed along, since I knew we'd be at least outdoors for a little bit, and I could maybe burn through some of the 50 ISO film that's in there. We got lunch at Bambino's, and as we were leaving, I took this photo of the sign, and it goes way harder than it should. After lunch, we made our way over to this little park in the area for a little afternoon stroll. The first thing I noticed when we pulled up was this mosque that's across the street from where we parked. It's an absolutely gorgeous building, and as we were driving up and once we parked, it really caught my attention, and I wanted to make sure I got at least one picture of it while we were in the area. Unfortunately, we weren't in a great spot for me to get a picture of the front of the building, but I did get this picture of the side that I think is pretty interesting. I think what makes this shot and the building itself so interesting to me is that it captures such a sharp contrast to the rest of what is otherwise a fairly generic Midwestern town. No offense, Springfield, I would say to your face. Once we got in the park, things stayed just as interesting for me. There was this building across the street that made me think of only the Teen Titans Tower, and that's the only way that I can think of it, and I've referred to it every time I've talked about it as that. I think it made a pretty interesting photo subject as well too, although I think this shot could have been better. I'd have to go back and walk around and try and find a better angle, but I do think there is a better shot to be found there somewhere. This park also has this installation of like this giant robot that moves when you turn the wheel that is attached to it. You can see in the video just how big it is later. Um, we did spin it later, but I did not get a video of that part as I was the one spinning it. I did, however, get a photo of it that I think came out really cool. It's a very abstract shot from kind of a weird angle. And it almost has like an AI generated kind of feel to it, but I promise I did actually take this photo. Because we're adults, we did also climb on the little playground rock wall that they had. And after I clambered back down, I took this photo of Rage and List that is really wholesome. After the park, we ended up meeting up later with Rachel's brother and one of his close friends to brave the almost Christmas crowd for some late kind of last minute holiday shopping for our Christmas the next day. Honestly, it was not as crazy out as I expected for it being very close to Christmas. But after we got the deals that we sought out, we ended up just going home and chilling out for the rest of the night. We had to go to bed early since everyone knows Santa doesn't come if you're still awake and tomorrow was our Christmas in Springfield. My Christmas wish list was full of like nerd shit and camera gear, and it seems Santa did read my list and take it into consideration because that is exactly what I got. I'm not gonna do a like Christmas haul or anything like that in this video because that feels weird to me, but I'll cover like Springfield here and then when we get over to Clarksville's Christmas, I'll share that stuff there. The first thing I got was this Peak Design strap. I don't remember the exact model off the top of my head, but I'll put it on screen now for you. I've used it like three or four times so far since I got it and I am absolutely in love with this strap. It's insanely comfortable. It is very easy to adjust both ends of it for your preferences. And there are a bunch of different ways that you can configure attaching it to your camera for your setup and what works best for your preferences. I also got a bulk film roller, which is very exciting to me. I'm hoping at some point over the next year to start bulk rolling a lot of my own film after I get through the film that I already have in the fridge. So this is just one less piece of that kit that I have to purchase myself. The one I'm most curious about so far is the Kodak Slided Scan uh, Scanner. I haven't got a chance to thoroughly test this out yet aside from like a couple of test rolls that I did with it, but I'll be curious to see if this is a way that I could potentially save some money on film scans if it ends up producing some decent quality scans. 
After a day of Christmas and falling into a Pikmin and Persona 5 into sleep, we awoke on our travel day. We did split this part of the drive, but I spent my Passenger Princess section of the drive diving into Book 2 of the Wheel of Time series. I did, however, stop long enough to take this picture out of the window, which scratches some nice itch in my brain. I don't know why I love this photo so much, but I really like it. We finally made it to my parents' house in Clarksville later that evening, and we basically went straight to bed after unpacking a little bit and getting settled. Hold on, I gotta change the match. Important business happening back there. Our first full day in Tennessee was actually Christmas Eve, and it was also our first full day with no real plans or anything, so we kept it very chill. I got up and braved the surprisingly average weather and went and grabbed us some Dutch Bros coffee for the morning, and we settled in for the day. Other than playing an unhealthy amount of Switch games, I also wandered around the house and snapped some photos. My mom always does very cozy and cute Christmas decorations around the house, and I love taking photos of them every year. Here are some of my favorite photos of her decorating this year. I also spent plenty of time petting the dogs. Remy is always happy for a good pet, but Joey's usually a little bit harder to convince. Christmas Eve this year ended with a nice handmade IHOP dinner. I'm not sure exactly how this became a tradition in our household, but we usually get Christmas Eve lunch or dinner at IHOP every year. Instead of cookies and milk, Santa is getting leftover IHOP Nashville hot chicken and waffles. After our extravagantly fancy Christmas Eve dinner was concluded, we went to bed a little bit early after some last minute Christmas gift wrapping. I don't want to keep Santa waiting after all since the next day was, of course, Christmas. Since both me and my sister had both just traveled, none of us were itching to get up very early on Christmas. If you're younger or you have younger siblings or children, this may sound insane to you, but trust me, when all of your family is over 25 now, we're all willing to trade a little bit longer of a wait to open presents for a few more hours of sleep. Unfortunately, my body does not know how to sleep in, so I was just awake and quietly reading on the couch for a while before anyone else woke up. Just me, Robert Jordan, and the dogs. I did also manage to capture this photo of Remy totally unprompted. Like, I know this looks staged, but I think this was just the moment that he heard my older sister's dog, Brownie, wake up upstairs. So he was very impatiently waiting for her to come downstairs. And I just happened to see it in time to grab my camera. Anyways, despite having to be dragged away from reading The Wheel of Time, kicking and screaming, I was soothed by opening some very exciting photography-related gifts. So let me share a couple of those now. The first thing I got was actually this VCR that doubles as a camera. This is the Minolta Freedom Zoom 105i. I'm shooting a test roll through this camera right now, so I'm currently not 100% sure how it works, but I really hope the shots come out all right because I unironically really like this camera. I don't know, there's just something about the super chunky body and the quirky functionality and features that are really charming to me. I also finally got a smaller and lighter travel tripod. I've needed one for a while, it just would suit my photography style and my like enjoyment of shooting so much more, but I just haven't pulled the trigger on one. This particular model is the Magnus TR-13 and I'm really enjoying it so far. I've used it like two or three times since I got it and it's been a huge step up from the slightly older and much heavier Manfrotto model that I've been using. It's not a bad tripod by any means, I just wouldn't use the word portable to describe it. Sturdy or usable, sure, 
but definitely not portable. This new one, however, is both lighter and much faster to fold and unfold, both of which make it incredibly useful for the way that I like to go out and shoot. It'll actually make an appearance later in the post credit scene, so keep an eye out for it in that part if you want to see it in use. Later on in the day, we spent a few hours watching the Gran Turismo movie, uh, and then jumped into playing some card games. My family's really big into card games, we play a lot of card and board games in the Wright household, and we also have a few dogs, so that means they are usually hanging out with us as well. Joey takes zero interest in our games and usually sits in his little bed next to my mom. Remy, however, cannot go very long without being pet or he will pass away, so he usually finds an open lap and makes himself at home there. I managed to snap this photo of him and Lindsay's lap between rounds of a tense game of Shanghai Remy. This picture is basically the only highlight of the evening though because that ended up being probably the single unluckiest game of cards I've ever been a part of just across the board. Happy birthday Jesus. Sorry your party was lame. Boxing day was set to be our travel day back to Memphis. We began it the way we begin most travel days, coffee and breakfast. Me and Rach went and grabbed Lassiter's, which is a favorite of ours, and because today was the only day that they would be open while we were in town, we had to make sure we got some. Before we hit the road though, we did get dressed up, we put real clothes on, and we took some family photos. Since we all live a little bit spread out, we try to take some good photos together whenever we're all together at least once or twice a year. My mom of course took the main photos digitally, but I did not pass up the opportunity to bring my cameras outside and snap some like behind the scenes personality shots of my sisters. And because I know someone will ask to see them, here's one of the family photos we took. To my surprise that morning, I did actually end up finishing both rolls there while I was outside. I think this is the first year I've actually finished the rolls I've loaded in my cameras at the holidays. Usually I get a little gung-ho and just keep loading film and I never finish those last couple rolls, but I think limiting my camera options to just two was actually the right move this time. With these last two rolls finished up though, the holiday trip was coming to an end. All that was left was to pack the car and make the drive home. Before I get into a recap of the whole holiday season expired film challenge, here are some of my main takeaways from just the Christmas part of our travels. Being locked to a maximum of 200 ISO sucks absolute buttons. Even the extra stop of just getting up to 400 ISO would have let me take a few extra shots that I ended up not taking because I just didn't have the light. I could also have stopped down for a few shots that I had to open up the aperture more than I would have preferred to something more like an f8 or 11 where I had to end up shooting it like f2 or f4 because I just didn't have the light. This was compounded by the fact that my little Nikon speed light that I packed at the beginning of the trip seems to have died or at least has seemed to stop cooperating with the two cameras that I brought on the trip. I've used it previously with my SRT 101 and the Fed camera that I brought on this trip with no real problems, but I would say this trip I had probably like a 15% fire rate of it actually shooting. The other times, even when the camera was indicating that it was set to sync with the flash, it just did not fire. I'm gonna look into it and see if I can clean it up and get it working, but it may be time to start cleaning off some of the other flashes that I have. I am really hoping though that this flash does still work because it is by far the smallest and lightest flash unit that I own, which makes it great for traveling. All of the other ones that I have are really bulky and heavy and not the most practical to carry around. The last takeaway way was that as much as I made a point to take my tripod with me, there was no real need for it. I was really hoping at some point that I would get a good amount of time to go out and take some like landscape or nature shots that I would use it for, but the time just never really arose and that's fine. Ultimately, I guess better to have it and not need it than to not bring it and not have it if I did actually have the time. So let's recap the whole expired film challenge now. Overall, I had a great time with it. Would I be lying if I said there were some shots that I wish I had taken on a different film stock? No, but that's just kind of the eternal regret of shooting film anyways. I knew coming in that there was a chance that some of these shots wouldn't come out the way I wanted, but honestly, I'm pretty happy with most of the shots that I got anyways. Most of them have this very nostalgic and cozy look to them that I really like. They also look kind of old and I think some of that might come down to some of these stocks being older versions of film stocks that we don't have anymore, at least in part. Would I recommend that you do this? 
I think so, yeah. It was a great creative limitation to put on myself, and I legitimately had a lot of fun experimenting with different shots that I probably wouldn't have had to think about as much if I would just shot on a regular fresh film or like a higher ISO film or something. I think if you're not as open to the idea of some of your shots not turning out, Maybe this isn't the challenge for you, but if you're open to weird results and a little bit of a challenge, I would say grab some expired film and give it a go. With the traveling behind me now though, I still had a roll of film to finish off before I could in good conscience mail my film off. I decided to continue the experimentation theme and actually take some early morning potential sunrise photos on black and white film. I've never tried this before, but I've been tossing the idea around for a while and the opportunities just never really come up, but this felt as good a time as any to give it a go. As I was on my way out to take these photos, I did get a little bit nervous that the park I was going to wouldn't be open yet, but my fears were assuaged when literally as I was pulling up, the gate was opened. I parked just before first light was supposed to happen and began hunting for my first shot. I considered stopping and taking my first shot by this metal Christmas tree that was close to the parking lot, but I wanted to save that for later and not risk missing out on a potential sunrise shot right over the water. The first shot I took handheld and I wasn't sure there would be enough light for it to come out, but lo and behold, it did. It looks like there was just enough light coming off of the street lamps to light up the scooters, and that was exactly what I was hoping would happen. And like I said, believe it or not, this shot was handheld. I hadn't set my tripod up yet and I just kind of popped the shot off while I was walking down towards the water and it actually came out really well. It's at this point in the post credit scene that I will ask you to pardon some of the bad camera angles. I'm still learning the art of vlogging. The first spot I set up at was somewhere that I'd shot before, but they never kind of turned out the way that I'd hoped for. There's this nice spot where the island kind of reflects off of the water, and I was hoping to get a nice minimalist framing of just the island and the reflection in the water. And I gotta admit, I'm incredibly proud of how this shot came out. This was basically exactly how I was picturing it in my head, so to see it come out that way is incredibly satisfying. For this next shot, I backtracked a little bit to where this line of trees also kind of reflects in the lake, albeit it's a little bit farther back than the island that I just shot. I was a bit less confident in the framing of this shot because I only had a 50 millimeter lens, but I thought it could still kind of end up being a cool shot, so I took it anyways. I took this shot multiple times actually because cars kept coming through the background and since I was shooting a long exposure, it was very difficult to avoid them. Although ironically, I kind of liked the version that had headlights in it more than the clean version. I also have to say, shooting low light photos at 3200 ISO feels like a cheat code. The photos and videos don't do justice to just how dark it actually was when I first started shooting, and even stopped all the way down to like f16 and f22, I think my longest exposure was like 2 seconds. Maybe 4 seconds at the absolute longest. For the last location I used my tripod at, I circled back to the metal Christmas tree that I mentioned a few minutes ago. I was a little bit unsure of how to frame this one actually, so I ended up doing a horizontal and vertical version of this photo, and I'm not really sure which one I prefer. In hindsight, I kind of actually wish I would have stopped and shot here first instead of beelining it straight to the water. I feel like the tree kind of blends in with the background a little bit more than I would have wanted, and I think the darker lighting would have actually given it more separation between that and the trees in the background. Better luck next time, I guess. From here, I just put the tripod away and ended up walking around the lake a little bit. And with this last shot, that is the end of the roll. Again, I'm really happy with how these low light shots came out and so happy in fact that I added a couple of them to my print shop, these photos. So if you're interested in checking any of those out as prints, you can go find that in the link in the description. But with the end of this post credit scene, this is actually the end of the video. So thank you for watching and have a happy new year.